Because this science is based on husn al dhan billah wa husn al dhan bi'ibadillah. The good opinion of, of Allah and the good opinion of the servants of Allah. That's something that, uh, and that's something that we've, we've lost, our community. We, we often assume the worst about people. If somebody's late, the assumption is they could care less about the appointment. What the Prophet said, one of the hallmarks of believers, يَلْتَمِسْ maadir. They look for excuses for people. And the munafiq is always looking to find faults in people. So it's something central to belief is that people who believe have a good opinion of other people. Now one of the things that in social sciences is that when you have expectations of people, they often will respond to your expectation. And I'll give you an example of that. There was a study done. They took a group of students that were all D students. And they put them in a class. And they, they told the teacher that these were the best students that they had last year. This was actually done in the U.S. And the teacher thought that they were all like gate students, gifted children. That class ended up all becoming A students. Because the teacher's expectation was so high. And what often happens is when teachers look at students, uh, how they behaved previously, they make the assumption, this is a C student. There's a kind of bell curve assumption about classes. Almost every teacher now, because the bell curve is such a, uh, an, an idol in our culture, so there's an assumption that you're going to have a certain amount of A's, a certain amount of B's, a certain amount of C's, and a certain amount of D's, and a certain amount of F's. It's an assumption. And sure enough, every year, the tests and everything predict that. Now, when I took statistics at the university, I asked the professor, have they ever done a bell curve on the teachers to see if there were more A's in excellent teachers you know, like, is the bell curve just confirming that C teachers have a majority of C students? So, and, and he said, yeah, that's a really good idea. <laughs> you know, because people don't think of things from other dimensions. But generally what's found is student teachers, excellent teachers often inspire students in classes. So they become better students. Because there's more motivation. And that's why having a good opinion of people is very important. There's a, a recent book that I think, I mean, this is something I've known intuitively and I've also known from the Sunnah, and I really believe in it, and it's the way I've tried to raise my children. But the book is called A Case Against Adolescence by Robert Epstein. And he's a psychiatrist, and what he did is he studied the phenomenon of adolescent rebellion. And in looking at the social sciences, what he found is in countries where there really isn't an adolescence, when people reach puberty, they begin to be treated like adults, they don't have the phenomenon of teenage rebellion. And so he's come up with a theory that Robert Ellis, who is a well-known, I mean, I don't particularly like his school of psychology, but he's very well respected in emotive behavioral therapy. He's a very well-respected psychiatrist, but he said it was the most revolutionary book he'd ever read. And what this man is arguing is, is that the reason ch young people are rebelling is because they're still being treated like children. John Taylor Gatto told me about a group of students that were in Harlem, and these were the worst students in this school. And they came in, they were all antisocial, they rebellious, had no respect for the teacher. And so what this teacher did is he made a deal with the principal of the school that he would teach his class at the junior college. And so these high school students would go to junior college. And he told them, I'm putting you, you guys in college. John Taylor Gatto told me that their behavior, the change in these young people just amazed this teacher. It was like an overnight, suddenly they wanted to behave like adults. 
They were in college. They didn't want to behave like punks anymore because they wanted to, to behave like the other college students. And so much of what's going on is just that assumption. If you expect these people to rebel and behave like, chi- and behave like children and you treat them with those assumptions, they respond in turn. Whereas if you have adult expectations of a 15-year-old, you'll be surprised. So there's so much in what we assume about other people. And that's why he's beginning this book like that. He is making the assumption that you are sincere in your love of God. It's, (laughs) you know, it's, it's just, it's beautiful. What, what false teachers do is they keep people down. They don't, a, a true teacher wants his student to even surpass him or her. That's a true teacher. They want the student to be better than they are. They want them to, to master the subject better than they've mastered it. That's their real desire. But false teachers want to keep people in a state of dependency on them and a type of servitude. And that's why eventually you, you outgrow your teacher if you're a serious student. And it doesn't mean that you don't have respect for them anymore. It's just that he's freed you by that education that you've gotten. So you're no longer dependent on that teacher. Like Imam Shafi'i was a student of Imam Malik's. But at a certain point, he started disagreeing with Malik. Why? Because Malik had done his job. He freed his mind to think for himself. But false teachers want, want to keep people trapped in their own thought cycles. They don't want them to go against them or to disagree with them. On the other hand, ignorant students tend to go against their teachers before they even have mastered the science. They just disagree. That's another problem. So it, go, it goes both ways. The principle of Hassan al which is very hard to to apply in, it's just a difficult principle. It's a beautiful principle. I'll give you an example. I was over in, in uh, at the Oberoi and we were having a meeting and I was speaking with Aisha. She was there. She's not here now. I was speaking with her. Asad came up and he said, Salaamu Alaikum. And I didn't even hear it. Because when I talk to people, I it's almost like everything else kind of just disappears. That's just the way I am. My wife knows that people that are close to me know that. I've had several people think that they came up to me and said salam to me, and I just ignored them. And they actually say that and tell people that. Like, he's arrogant. I went up to him and I said salam alaikum right to his face. And he just ignored me. I'd never do that to anybody. First of all, legally, I'm obliged to say, even if I didn't want to say, Salaamu Alaikum, it's a, it's a wajib. So I'm not going to do something that's, you know, you have to say it. I mean, I wouldn't do that just because it, it's my deen. But, and I wouldn't do it humanly because I don't like to do that. I don't try not to treat people like that. But when I realized Assad was there, you know, I said, oh, excuse me, I didn't, you know, I... I didn't mean to ignore He said, no, no, I know, Shaykh, you know, because he knows me. But Husn al is to assume like he's preoccupied, he didn't hear me. Su al is to think he just ignored me. As, as you see, so the thing about it is maybe the person did ignore you. That's possible. Maybe they are arrogant. That's possible. But maybe they're not. And so the idea is that you err on the side of goodness. That's the essential difference between the Sunni and the Shia. The Shia have a bad, not all of them, but, but some of them have a bad opinion of Abu Bakr and Omar. They actually think they usurp the... And then they have a bad opinion of Muawiyah, Amr ibn al-As. We, what we say, we believe like Muawiyah was wrong. That's our opinion. But we believe that he had a sincere intention. That's our assumption about... Maybe it's wrong. Do you know? Maybe it is. Maybe on the Yom Qiyamah, maybe it's wrong. Maybe Muawiyah had a bad intention. But we don't believe that. Because Allah knows the hearts. What we're saying is he's a Sahabi. The Prophet ﷺ spoke well of him. 
He came late, there's no doubt about that. He's not from the Khulafa al-Rashidin and Mahdiin. He made mistakes. He started the dynasty in Islam. He did certain things. But nonetheless, we believe he was a good man, that his Islam was a true Islam. He wasn't a hypocrite. And that he made the best of the situation. That's our opinion. That's husn al dhan the other opinion is saying, no, he, he was bad. His intentions were bad. That's why he did it. It's a completely different methodology. And so when you have Husn al as a principle in communities, it's, it's so much better to live in a community like that. It's a lot less psychologically taxing because one of the most draining things in life is dealing with psychodramas. It just drains you of energy when people have all these dramas and he said and she said and I know they did it on purpose and I know that they just were trying to spite me and I know... And just think of how much energy you've wasted in your life on conversations like that. Uh, it's just... And there's too much work to do. There's orphans to take care of. There's widows to take care of. There's poor people that need food on their plates. There's uh, injured people that need to be cared for. There's ignorant people that need to be taught. There's thirsty people that need to be given drink. I mean, there's lots to do in the world. You just don't have that kind of time to expend all that human energy. Because energy is a gift from God. To have energy to do things. And to waste that energy in, in these kind of... Whereas if you just have a good opinion of people, it's just such an extraordinary thing. And so that's why it's very important not to speak ill of people because it generates bad feelings and bad thoughts about people. It generates them. So the Prophet was asked when he said that, what about if you mention it and it's true? And he said, that is ghiba. If it's not true, it's buhtan. Buhtan is what they said about Maryam. And, and Bahat, you know, is to be totally shocked. See, if you speak ill of a person, like if you say so-and-so drinks wine, and then you go up to so-and-so, and he does drink wine, and you say, you know what Abdullah said? He said, you drink. He might be upset that he said that, but he's not shocked, because he knows he drinks. Whereas if he doesn't drink, and somebody says, oh, so-and-so said you drink... What? You know, that's Bhutan. And that's what they said about Maryam, that she was, you know, a prostitute. That's what they said about uh, Aisha Radilan. That's what she got sick. She was a month. She almost died. She couldn't eat. Because she just. She, Aisha was. She was a young girl when she came into the Prophet's house. She was nine years old. She. she, she uh, you know, just couldn't even imagine that. It wasn't even in her frame of reference. You know, she was she's just a pure girl, and it wasn't in her frame of reference to even to think of something like that. So when it was said to her, you know, and then when it was mentioned, Mistah, who was related, you know, no, he would never say that. She couldn't believe it. That's Bhutan. So Ghiba is to say something that's true about the person. And the reason it's insidious is because the person's not there and they don't have the ability to defend themselves. If they were there, they might explain to you why they have. وَتَوْبَةَ السَّارِكِينَ مِنْ عِلَلَ الْقُلُوبِ وَالْآفَاتِ The tawbah of people on a path to God is the tawbah of things in their hearts, having a bad opinion of somebody. I'll give you an example. In Mauritania, and this is a true story, there was a man there, he didn't have his beard, he's a young man, a lot of the young men shaved their beard, and he came into this, he was in this thing, and there was an old imam there, one of the ulama there, very simple man, very humble man, and he, he, he looked at this man, and, and they made some exchanges, but the man that was with him, who had brought him to, when they left, this beardless man and this who, who, the friend of his told me the story he started uh, saying you know these old shiuch you know this is what's holding us back and this is the tkhalaf of Mauritania this is like the backwardness and these you know they're just so pathetic and this he was going on and on and just backbiting this guy <laughs> and the next day 
the old man went to find this man. He wanted to see the man without the beard. And when he finally got him, he, he took to him aside and said in private, please forgive me. He said, what? He said, I had a hard time sleeping last night. And he said, why? And he said, because I, I saw you didn't have a beard, and I just assumed that you were a fasik. And I, I had no right to make that assumption. And, and, and I just want to ask your forgiveness for that. And that had a complete transformation on this person because he thought about all the things, the bad things he'd said about that man to another man and had no remorse for it. And this man was troubled by having a bad thought about him. And he couldn't sleep from it. So these are maqamat, and that's what he's saying about the people of Suluk. They're worried about their heart, the state of their heart, about what they're thinking about people, about hasad, about shuh, tama, these type things. That's what's troubling them, and they're making tawbah for that. Imam al-Hatmi says that the first degree of wilaya is that you begin to do muhasaba of the khatir. Uh, Ibn Ashir says, yuhasibu nafsa ala al-anfasi, Ibn Ashur says that in this moving towards God that you begin to take your breast to account, your soul to account based on your breast. So you, you actually realize your breasts are accountable. Every breath you take is accountable. And, that, and then you actually weigh your thoughts in the divine scales, whether the thought is acceptable or not. And that's what that imam was displaying, is that he realized that he had a suspicion in his heart about this man, and, and he wanted to ask the man for... On the other hand, like the Moroccans say, don't belittle any Muslim because he might be a wali of Allah. You know, in other words, you should, you should just be aware of Muslims in general, of harming other Muslims. It's not a good thing to want to do. So that's the idea of uh, Qiyara. And then the next one is the bad opinion of others. So he says, وَظَنُّوا بَعْضًا مِنْهُ لَا يُبَاحُوا كَسُوبِ مَنْ ظَاهِرُوا صَلَاحُوا Van is suspicion. It's also opinion, conjecture. It's where you uh, think something without having any facts to support it. It's a van. Right? Now, the worst bad opinion is having bad opinion about people who outwardly they have righteous uh, appearance and behavior. And appearance was something that the early Muslims actually considered important as well. In other words, Although, they say, beware of uh, people who you might think have a bad appearance because sometimes uh, they're just, Allah has veiled them. But they have what's called uh, al-wasma. You know, the Arabs have something they call wasma, which is wasim. Wasim is somebody who has a good face. Like when the Arabi came to Sallallahu and left, they asked him, what did you think of him? He said, laysa wajhuhu wajhat kadab. His face isn't the face of a liar. And this, was, this is called firasa. You know, having the ability to see in people's faces a goodness or a badness that, that's actually manifest in the face. And so having a bad opinion of somebody who has this wasma, you know, outwardly they, they appear to be a righteous person, that's a bad type of dhan. Wa in the ba'd of ithm, Allah says. Some of dhan is wrong action. And this is important because generally we don't, the heart you're not taken to account for. But there is a riba of the heart. And that is to have a bad opinion of somebody that's unfounded. That actually is written against you. So that's really important. It's called ghibat al-qalb. And that's something, it's not like a... You see, Allah doesn't take you to account for what occurs to your heart. He takes you to account for what does azam. It, what continues. Azam is written against you in the heart. Right? We'll go into that when we get to the khawatir. Because there's degrees. Right? Hajjus, Azima. There's degrees of thought, levels. Hadith and nafs And Azima is the highest degree. And that, and that is what's written against you. Run in the heart if you actually do believe it and it causes you to have an effect on your behavior towards that person, it's considered ghibat al-qalb. And it's actually a ghibat in which a second person is not involved. It's between you and your own heart. And that is, that's not permissible. That's why he's saying, minhu la yubahu. It's not permissible. It's actually written against you. And then he said, Ay, aqtu qalbika. So it's azima. It's aqtu qalbika. Your, 
your qalb, it, it means your heart is convinced and you've judged him based on your heart's suspicions without a proof that warrants such assumption. You don't have a dalil for it. So somebody says, why didn't you like that person? He says, I just don't, my heart tells me something's wrong. Now obviously, and we'll go into that in a second about uh, the, you know, following the heart about certain things, right? And the hadith which is muttafaq alayhi says, إِيَّاكُمْ وَظَنَّ فَإِنَّ الظَّنَّ أَكْتَبُ الْحَدِيثِ Beware of bad opinion because it's the most, uh, it's the most treacherous or the most false of uh, speech. Where there's no dalil. You say to somebody, uh, do you know so-and-so? That he's a really bad person. And you say, what's your proof? I just know he is. <laughs> right? That's أَكْتَبُ الْحَدِيثِ That is a, that's a lie. Because you have no dalil and our sharia is based on ahkum bil I was commanded to judge people in outward matters. Right? So it's really important to look to the outward and see the behavior and things like that. And then he says, La ithma fi shakki wala man istanada li sabbin falam yakun mujarrada. There's nothing wrong with having doubts about someone or having a bad opinion of him if it is based upon sound reason and it is not without evidence. Ah. So this is a really important distinction. The difference between shak and ran is ran is you have made, when you have your, uh, your, your scales, right? Shak is where both the scales are balanced. Is he good? Question mark. Is he bad? Question mark. That's shak. I've got doubt about that person. What that means is, I don't know. And I, I just, I have to be wary because I just don't know. That is not haram. Van is where you make the decision without proof that he's bad. Does everybody understand this really important difference that will help you in life? So, now how do we deal with people that we do get these feelings of doubt about? The first thing, if he is a fasiq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبْئٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا And in a riwayah sab'iyya, فَتَثَبَّتُوا if a fasiq comes to you, find out whether he, what he said is true or not true before you take it. So if somebody who's known to do kaba'ir, a fasiq is somebody who does kaba'ir openly, or is mutahawan with, with sagha'ir uh, openly and consistently. He's always doing less or wrong actions without any care about them. All right? So that person is a fasiq. If they come to you telling you something, you, you can't, take that at face, you cannot take it uh, at face value. You have to find out whether it's true or not. Now, if you have doubt about a person, about his badness, shik, what Sidi Ahmed Zarruq says is, and this is really good advice, even though it's coming from the 9th century, it's actually more pertinent in the 15th century, and that is, لا تؤمن أحدا على دينك أو أهلك O Malika Hatta to Jarribuhu Alpha Alfi Marra. Don't trust anybody with your deen, your family, or your wealth until you've tried him at least a million times. No, Alf Alpha Alfi. A thousand thousand times. And that's called hyperbole, it's Mubalagha. What he's saying is you better test them and see if, if they're uh, true and sincere or not. If you don't know, don't trust them. One of the poets said, uh, he said, حُسْنُ الظَّنِّ فِي الْأَيَّامِ مَنْ قَصَتُونَ فَظُنَّ شَرًّا ثُمَّ كُنْ مِنْهُ عَلَى وَجَرِي A good opinion in, this, in these days is foolishness. So think the worst of people and then be on guard. And, and seriously, that is what the ulama all say. When time, when, when the period that you're in is full of corrupt people, then the best position is to be distrustful of people. It's not run, right? It's just that you are distrustful of people. You don't trust people until you've really tested them. Just because there's so many people that it's just one of, it's a time like that. People don't have taqwa. They'll cheat you. They'll come out to you smiling and tell you, you know, what wonderful Muslims they are and this and that. And, and, and they cheat you, right? And it happens all the time. And that's why the ulama all about zakat. Time is bad 
it's, it becomes an obligation on distributed of zakat to check out the people's uh, situation. They can't just give them zakat. If, if, if it's a good people, if most of the people are good, then in those situations you believe people. But when you get corrupted uh, times and people, and somebody comes and says, brother, I've got five children, I don't have any money, I need, then you, you, it's a responsibility for you to go find out if, if their claim is truthful. And they cannot regret, they can't get upset or angry about that. They have to accept that it's not for you. It's like in this culture they say, you know, well, the bad ones ruin it for the good ones. Right? Sorry we have to do this, but we've been cheated so many times. That's the type of situation. They have to be told, unfortunately, because you know, we've been tricked and this is an amana from Allah, we really need to find out whether your situation is as you stated. It's not that we're, we don't trust you, it's just this is a blanket policy for everybody for that reason. And that's unfortunate, but that is uh, the reality of it. So that is a uh, bad opinion of others. So having doubts about people, there's nothing wrong with that. And then a bad opinion of a person who there's ample evidence that he's a bad person. That's just common sense. On, on the other hand, do not, do not, if people make toba, then don't hold their past. And one of the worst things you can do is remind people of the past evil that they've done. That's a really bad thing to do to people. You should always not remind people of, of, of the past. You should really let people, uh, you know, let go of their past. Don't you hold on to it. Because it's unfair to, to other people. And then there's another hadith also that says, Khasratani ma uti al mu'minu khayram minhuma, husna van billah wa husna van bi ibadillah. A good opinion of Allah and a good opinion of the servants of Allah are two things that no mu'min was given better than it. So generally it's good to have a good opinion, certainly of Allah and generally of the uh, slaves of Allah. Now one of the things that Ibn Umar said is, ma darra abdun. Ma darra abdan husna dhan. No servant was ever harmed by a good opinion. Whereas a bad opinion can harm you. So generally, it's better to have a good opinion of people until proven. You know, by sharia, it's called barat al asliya. People are innocent until proven guilty. So you should not assume that people are guilty until really there's, there's ample evidence of it. The other thing that's really important is the opinion of Allah. There's a hadith in Tabarani, أنا عند الظن عبدي بي فليظن عبدي بي ما شاء I am in the opinion of my servant, so let my servant think whatever he wants of me. And then there's another hadith that clarifies that which says أنا عند الظن عبدي بي right? فمن ظن بي خير وجد خير ومن ظن بي شر وجد شر Whoever, I'm in the opinion of my servant. If he thinks good of me, he finds good. And if he thinks evil of me, he finds evil. And that hadith is essential to understanding something really important, which is the other hadith, which is in the 40 hadith of Imam Noe, in which he says uh, that every servant uh, has what he uh, deserves. And then he said, uh, فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ If he finds good, let him thank Allah. وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يَلُمَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَ And whoever finds other than that, let him only blame his own soul. The idea here is that if you're a true mu'min, everything is going to be good for you. فَعَجِبًا لِأَمْرَ الْمُؤْمِنِ فَأَمْرُهُ كُلُّهُ خَيْرُ The affair of the mu'min, it's all good. And a, and a true mu'min, you will believe that even the bad that happens to you is for a, a, a reason. There's good in it. And that's a different world view from people who are the mutatayyar, the pessimist. He's going to look... And then we have Sahtur uh, Qadr. You know, why is this happening to me? I don't deserve this. What did I do to deserve this? When, when you fall them, right? They, like the Prophet ﷺ said, that if you're not angry at me, right? I don't care. If you're not angry at me, then I'm not. وَلَكَنَ الْعَافِيَةُ أَوْ سَعْدِي But the afiyah is more comfortable for me. I mean, I'd rather be in a situation where it's not so difficult. But the difficulty of the situation for the mu'min is still a good thing. And so that's having a good opinion of Allah and a good opinion of others. The next disease is uh, uh, al الهز, hazu And uh, this is uh, derision, deriding people, uh, making fun of people. 
uh, in, in the Quran when Ibrahim, when Musa alayhi salam tells the Bani Israel to sacrifice the cow, they, they say, Atastahzi'u bina, are you making fun of us? Is this huzu? And he said, A'udhu bidaa an akum mina jahileen. I seek refuge that I should be from the ignorant ones. From that the ulama took it that istihza is from jahil. It's ignorant to, uh, to have istihza towards people, to make fun of people. That, that's a type of ignorance. And um, it, this can be lampooning, right? Uh, making caricatures of people, drawing funny things. Uh, in this culture you have comedians that make fun of people and, uh, and, and anybody, they take as their target. What he says about this, first of all, uh, that its cure is the same cure for arrogance because it's a type of arrogance. If you see them as less than you, then it's kibbutz. Then you're arrogant. And this is why uh, the, the Moroccans say this, but it's actually from uh, Sayyidina Ali. Um, they say, La تحقيرو... Uh, Abdan Asan Yakun Lillahi Waliya. Don't don't belittle anybody because he might be a wali of Allah. And the reason for that is even if you see a man drunk, vomiting on the street, you don't know what his seal is. Right? And that's why Imam al Qurtabi said, Omar, when he was bowing down to idols in Mecca, was still the beloved with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Al Umur bi khawatimiha. Uh, Allah knows what the seal is. So that, that Omar who was bowing down to idols that the, the Muslims could have looked at and made fun of and what a stupid idiot and a polytheist, etc., etc. They didn't know Omar. Right? They were just seeing one stage. And that's why it's very dangerous to judge somebody uh, where they are or make fun of them or things like that. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la yaskhar qawmun Min qawmin asa and yakunu khayram minhum. Don't let one people mock another people because maybe they're better than them. Wala yaskharna nisa wala taskhar nisa un min nisa un asa and yakunna khayram minhunna. And don't let a group of women mock another group of women because maybe they're better than them. Mm-hmm. He said that um, he did not say anything and said even Jibreel laughed at them. Allah, I don't know. It might be. But uh, what I know is that the Prophet was commanded not to curse their gods. Don't curse those who call on other than Allah, meaning the idols, because they will curse Allah out of ignorance. And that's called Sadda Dhari'a. So things like burning the Israeli flag publicly. Uh, Muslims do stuff like that or burning the American flag. What you're going to do is have them go and take Qurans or something and burn them or stomp on them or you're going to have them go and take a, a Saudi Arabian flag that has La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah on it and stomp on it and burn it. So you incite them to do something that you know is not only bad for them but it's also it's, it's uh, sacrilegious to us. Right? We don't want people cursing Allah. So, so you shouldn't do that. There's no reason to do it. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, in his victories, he was, never, uh, he was never boastful. When he went into Mecca, he went with his head bowed down. He didn't go in triumphant leader. He went with his head bowed down. Total humility. And, and that, that's the great, that's the warrior. I mean, that's the great, not that other one. Because so, that's Jahiliya. I mean, that's Abu, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, Abu Jahal. No, that, that's what those people do. And we're supposed to be above that. We're supposed to be in a real way. Not, not in, a, in a false way, in a deep way. Mm-hmm. Uh, regarding the fact that we don't know the seal of a person, how they'll end up where they, if their Muhammad might change. So we don't derive them, but what about like, praying against them? Or oh, no, that's, you can pray against uh, your enemies. Uh, it's mustahab to make dua for people, uh, for guidance. That's mustahab, it's not a wajib. It's mustahab to make dua for people. Um,
Some of the ulama said, don't curse Israel because it was the name of a prophet. Right? <laughs> the name of a prophet. So, you know, but, I mean, the point is, is that, and then also, you know, there a lot of Jews become Muslims. They have throughout history and they still do. Right? And there are Jews that become Muslims. There's been Israelis that have become Muslims. So they're human beings. I mean, they're not demons. They're human beings. Right? The Serbs are human beings. I mean, I, there, there's some, been some good articles recently just about the demonization of the Serbs. The Serbs are our enemies and, and they did some horrible things. But they're human beings that can become Muslim. What the Jihadi Arabs, Hind ate the bits into the liver of Hamza. I mean, that's, it doesn't get much more barbaric than that. She became a Muslim. Wahshi who killed him became a Muslim. So people can make Tawbah and they can become Muslim. And those people that did all those things, you know, it would be interesting to see what they're like now, how they're sleeping at night, you know, because people do things in war and, and they pay for it for the rest of their lives. And, uh, and more, Vietnam, Viet, uh, more veterans of the Vietnam War have committed suicide than died in Vietnam in this country. Right? A lot of people don't know that. So they paid their price, and the people at the Gulf War uh, who saw that carnage, you know, they'll pay their price. They're human beings. They have hearts, you know. I mean, you, you, you all of you have worked with non-Muslims. They cry. They have tears. Allah said, you know, in يمسسكم قرحون فقد مسرقوا قرحون مثلهم. If you're afflicted with something, they get afflicted with it too, right? So we all bleed red. Uh huh. <laughs> well, I mean, the Prophet ﷺ, there's du'as in the Quran against the body mean. So anybody who oppresses, which is why the Prophet ﷺ said, "Rubba qari and the Quran, wal Quran yalanuhu." Maybe a man's reading the Quran and the Quran's cursing him, <laughs> right? Because Allah says, "Ala inna la'na tala ala kathibin." Isn't it that the la'na of Allah is on the, those who lie? If you're reading the Quran and you're a liar, you're reading a curse on you. Every, and he, you know, inshallah, Allah gives tawfiq. It's all tawfiq from Allah. You know, to be able to do that. It's a gift from Allah. And the thing, I would be that, the thing that prevents us from qiyam al and these things is, uh, riba, you know, eating haram things, all, all that. That's what stops it. Because this is a gift from Allah. And people that have done it in their lives and then lost it, they know that the time that they were given up that, it was a gift from Allah. And when it's taken away, it's, a, it's like a punishment. So you just make tawbah, ask Allah to give us, inshallah, all tawfiq. But it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, the, the people of uh, the qawm, they, they used to have so much muhasaba of themselves that whenever they were afflicted with something, they knew what caused it. And one of the ulama said, I once... Uh, uh, said something about somebody I shouldn't have said and I was deprived to Hajjud for 40 days because of it. So they, they could see like relations of why things happen. And another one he said uh, in the end of his life he went bankrupt and he said he realized it was from 40 years before he had once said to a man Ya Muflis. And that's what he said. He realized that that was the source of that Allah gave him what he had called that other man pointed out his fault. So, Hasanat al Abrar Sayyat al Muqarrabin. You know, the good actions of righteous people are the bad actions of the. Mm -hmm. And also, including that would be weaknesses or faults of Muslims, whether they are absent or present. So, actually reflecting on the faults of Muslims. Right? I mean, you shouldn't even be doing that. And that's why there's a hadith, Tuba liman shagarahu aibu an ayubi ghayrihi. There's a tree in paradise for the one who's preoccupied with his own faults uh, over the faults of others. 
His own preoccupation causes him to forget the faults of others. And the older you get, the more serious you should take that. You know, really. And it's just, life's too short to be. Everybody's got faults, and if you start thinking about other people's faults, you're just a fool. The point is, is to get rid of your own. And also, uh, I put in there, because it's important, but it's... The next one is Bughd. Another disease is hatred. What Bughdo la fi jandab al Ali. He's saying this Bughd is not hatred. It's it's hatred for other than the sake of Allah. In other words, it's good to hate for the sake of Allah. You should hate corruption. You should hate uh, evil. You should hate right. But you also have to recognize that it's there by the permission of Allah, not by the riba of Allah, but by the izn of Allah. So that's important, so that you don't lose sight that Allah is is in control, right? But you should hate it because Allah has told us to hate it. And the Prophet ﷺ did not hate things for their essence. He hated things because of what they manifested, their attributes. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ did not love, uh, did not hate the zawat, right? He hated the sifat, right? Because Allah created the, the sifat and then He gave human beings the ability to do bad in attributes, in sifat, right? So you should hate the things that people do, uh, but, you know, not, not uh, let that hatred blind you, which it does. People become blind with, with hatred. And that's not blindness for the sake of Allah. Uh, that's not hatred for the sake of Allah. So this is with the understanding that you have not done a wrong if you're repulsed by your hatred and do not act in accordance with it to harm the person. What that means is هذا ولا تأثم إن 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 قيلاه تكره ولم تعمل بمقتطعه. It means that your qila or your hatred is not uh, that when you find it in yourself, you don't like it. Why don't I like that person? You know, if you don't have a sharia reason for not liking a person, and you don't like them. It's not a good sign. There, there has to be a sharia reason. If you don't like them without a sharia reason, it's it's a disease in the heart. There's no reason you should not dislike them. It's something in the heart. Which does not mean that people have incompatibilities. In other words, you might not be compatible with another person, but you shouldn't have hatred towards them, right? Unless they're doing something wrong. So it doesn't mean you have to be their friend or you have to spend time with them, but if you feel in your heart that you have animosity towards that person or bughab, it's a disease of the heart. And, what's that? Yeah, we're getting to that, inshallah. <laughs> I think there's a line missing here. Yeah. Oh no, he gave it in the first one. Sorry. He said it's cure is to pray for the one you don't like. In other words, if you don't like the person, uh, what you do is is you actually make dua for them specifically. Mention their name and ask Allah, you know, Allah bless this person, give them thing. And this is actually, I mean, it's, it's advice. And if you do that, you'll get a cure for it. Allah will remove that bullet from your heart. So, but again, you have to take the medicine if you want the benefit. It's not, he's not joking about these things. I mean, they're real. And you have to do it with sincerity because the whole point is you don't want this disease. You want to get rid of it. So you do it with sincerity. It's not like, oh my God, I have to make dua for this person. It's like, subhanAllah, I don't want to have these feelings. Ya Allah, remove these feelings from me. Bless this person. Increase them. Things like that. And then he goes to the next disease, which is called al baghyu Uh-huh. If there's a sharia reason, you should not hate them if they're Muslim. You should hate what they do and you should actually want good for them. Uh, you should never hate a Muslim. Al-mu'minu la yafraku mu'mina. A mu'min does not dislike another mu'min. Even, even if they're a bad Muslim, unless they're a munafiq, which is another thing. Uh, 
the munafiq is somebody. But if you see that there are people that pray, that they're, they're struggling with their deen and things like that, but they do bad things, you should not like the things they do, but you should not hate them. And I'll tell you, it's a big secret, but one of the uh, sahaba, the Prophet وسلم, said, uh, do you want to see a man who is for paradise? And they said, yes. And, and a man passed by and he said, that man's from the people of paradise. And one of the sahaba said he had to see what he was doing. He wanted to see what he would do that made him give him that station. And so he asked if he could spend time with him, and he said yes. And he noticed he didn't do night prayers, he didn't fast, he didn't do anything in particular. He was just an average Muslim in Medina. He didn't really see much difference from the other people, in fact, less. And he told him, he finally said, you know, I've just been watching you, and you know, I was trying to see what you do, and, and you don't really do a whole lot, and you know, do you have any practices that you do? You know, and the man said, the only thing that I can think of, other than what everybody else does, is that I make sure I never go to bed with any rancor in my heart towards another Muslim. And so he knew that that was his secret. Right? So really removing rancor from the heart is just a bad thing. It's, it'll eat a, a person up. And Baghi comes right after that. Uh, Baghi is another horrible thing. Um, Baghi, according to the opening of the truth, which is a book, is harming creation where there is no just cause. And the word Baghi in Arabic, it's one of the words for prostitute, uh, Baghi, and that's what they accuse, A'udhu Billah, Maryam of. Again, yeah, I would think that if you don't feel comfortable with a person, uh, you should not consider, you, you know, to say I don't feel comfortable about, around that person uh, is not the same as saying it's a bad person. Because I had uh, one of my teachers, Sheikh Hamid, told me once when he was a student, he said there was a man who really liked him, a student there, and he was always with him, and he didn't like him. He just didn't like him. And he went to Murabbar Hajj and he told him, he said, I feel bad because I don't really like being around this person. This person be, likes being around me. And Murabbar Hajj said to him, Arwah junudu mujannada. You know, the souls are regimented ranks. And ma, ma ta'arafa minha at-taraf wa ma tanakara at-taraf. The souls, you know, some souls don't feel harmonious around each other. And it doesn't mean that they're bad or something like that. It's just some people you, you might not feel a connection to and other people you feel an immediate connection to. And some of the ulama say it had to do with the pre-worldly uh, existence of the arwah. The closer arwah were to you on that day of the mashhad, uh, the more affinity you'll feel towards them. And the further away they were from you, the more distant you'll feel uh, towards them. So there are people you meet and it's like instantaneously you feel like you've known them all your life. Like I had that feeling with Sheikh Abdullah Al-Qadi. When I first met him, it was just like there was no... It's like I knew that person all my life. And, 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 and I think he felt the same way. So you just there's certain people you'll have an instantaneous connection with and other people you won't. And then some people it develops over time. And there's wisdom in all of those things. One is where you have a bad opinion of somebody without having any proof. Have, distrusting people is not one. In other words, as a general principle, you are distrustful of people. The ulama say it's, it's wisdom in bad times. It's wisdom to be on your guard. Don't become paranoid, right? I mean, it's the idea is not to become paranoid, right? Do you hear what he said? Do you see how he looked at me? You don't want to do that. That's, that's a psychological condition to be avoided. Seriously. I'm doing that. Exactly. Like that.